Welcome to the Sports Car Lessons Podcast. I'm your host, Big Ken. Whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on a streaming service, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. You'll be notified whenever I drop any new content. Before I jump into today's episode, I know because of our friendship, people are expecting my reaction to what happened with sports car therapist Rob Gerard this past weekend. I want to be completely transparent. I haven't spoken with Rob since this news broke on Friday. I honestly don't know the full story. What I do know is I don't condone the choices he made. It's not how I conduct business. And goes against my hobby morals. This being the Sports Card Lessons podcast, I hope we can all take a lesson from this by continuing to hold ourselves to higher standards in the hobby. With that said, I have a really great episode for you today. So without further ado, here we go. Welcome, thanks for being here. How is everyone doing? Today I'm excited to have friend of the show back for another appearance, uh, Jordan at Zips Cards. Jordan, how you doing tonight? Doing good. Saw you all weekend. You know, we had the road trip and then I saw you down near my house near Mohegan and uh, just excited to talk to you once again this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, we spent, <laughs> it, was, it was like, it was like, a, what was that show on Netflix? The longest third date, right? It was like, it was like Happy. I, I, I picked you up at, at, at uh, 530, right? 530, 5.30 a.m. Yeah. Yep. And then we got to Foxborough at seven. Yeah, hung out there all day. Then you, yeah. I was on the way home to, from <clears throat> for the Mohegan. You stayed overnight there, and then I yeah. met you again this morning. Yeah. So we survived Card Show Mageddon weekend. Yeah, right. I mean, there were so many, so many card shows this weekend, and you know, people were talking about it. I mean, people came from other countries, you know, to come to come down and hit up hit up all these card shows. So we did, uh, or I set up a Gillette show. You came with me. You came and hung out. Um, we did that show on Saturday. So we got there at seven. And I have to say, I mean, Card Vault, what a great place to have a show, first of all. I mean, it was, it was easy in, easy out. And these guys hooked me up. They gave me a table at the front door. Right. I mean, we were the second table people coming through the door. I, you know, for whatever reason, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I got, I got that table there, but it may be because I signed up very early. Yep. Um, thanks to you sending me the, uh, the link as soon as it went live to sign up for a table there. And that's actually thanks to Matthew Atwood, the, the really nice guy, uh, Boston Buckeye who yep. we, who I, we gave the cards to for his daughters. Mm -hmm. Um, he at the Boston show, he gave me the, the little scan code for it. Um, yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah, shout out to him. That's that's who gave it to me, and then I gave it to you. Um, yeah. but yeah, also, I didn't tell you the because the table number was A3, the letter I thought you said 83. So that's that's why we we were we were like the first people there. That's why we did that whole circle. If I knew it was A3, I would have known we were there. I thought it was 83. So I was See, like, oh. I knew I knew it was A3, but the thing was, and what everybody did wrong, because the guy told me when you looked at when you looked at the, the setup, when they sent sent the setup, so looking at it straight ahead, you figured when you came in, you came in on the right side of the, the table setup. Right. And A was all the way to the left, but that was we were looking at it from the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. had to look at it from the opposite side. So that was actually all the way to the left and not the right. So kind of when sense. I walked in, I, I I said right away, oh, we must be all the way at the other end. Right. And didn't realize we were the first. We did a lap. We we literally did a whole lap and back with the cart stuff on it, you know, the, the, mm -hmm. the cases and everything. But yeah, yeah, that was great. And and what, a, what an unbelievable place, right, to have a card show. I yeah. mean the window, the windows behind us. We were looking through to the to the stadium, looking down onto the field and stuff like that. And then um, I looked today. You know, um, King of Cards. He's all he's like a big social media. He does the flipping and the trading up. He somehow he was on he was on the the field today throwing throwing footballs around. 
Oh, really? Well, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, it looks like today, like some of the people there got some access. I, I don't know, but he was throwing footballs on there. So yeah, what a great venue. I mean, Card Vault. They they had the Fenway show, yeah. which was was really cool. You know, at a, at a baseball stadium, and then now at a football stadium, and then they have um, the Causeway show that's right at TD Garden. I don't know if you've been there yet, even as an attendee. I mean, it it's it's special. I think it's special. I think it's really cool what they do. I think it's yeah. different than how other people do it. And yeah. I mean, you see the people who are coming there, and we talk about every everyone, everyone everywhere. Markets down, markets down. If if no one had told me that, and th- and I just showed up to a card show and I saw all the deals being done and all the cash being thrown around, I I wouldn't know that. Yeah, wouldn't yeah. know it. When when is the TD Bank one, the Causeway? No, no, T- TD Garden, the I mean, TD Garden where the, where the Celtics play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they 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 are opening or they just opened a third shop at that at the Celtics Stadium and the Bruins and the Bruins yeah. where they both yeah, yeah. play. Yeah. Um. And it's because they're big night live. I, again, I could be so wrong, but I think they're like <laughs> they're they're involved somewhat. I, I don't know their yeah. business, but I know it's it's awesome. And yeah. the show there was cool. And yeah. No, um, nice. So, yeah, I would like to do a show there too. I mean, I like these destination shows, you know, yeah. the Fen, Fenway Park. So I missed the one at, at Foxwoods last year. I was in North Carolina. I missed that show. But yeah, that was did, one of my favorite shows. I did the Fenway show. That was a great show. Uh and and now another great show, know, yep. Yeah, this this was just an unbelievable show. So let so let's get into the show. We get set up over there. Um, second second from the door, we got a guy right next to us. He's setting up. Uh, well, before we even go to that, I I have right. to admit, I have I have to admit, we set up, and it was just one of those days. I kind of walked around and I was looking in everybody's cases, and I really wasn't seeing what I would usually see. Right. So I kind of did it after we set up, I did a quick lap and I looked around and I noticed that, you know, there were prices were high on cards or, you know, looking around and, you know, I didn't get any deals done pre-show. I talked to a lot of people. I saw a ton of people there. I was excited to see, talked to a lot of people. And I came back, you referred to me as Eeyore. And I said, I don't know. I just, I have a feeling this is not going to be a very good show today. And, and, you know, call me Mr. Negative or whatever, but I couldn't have been more wrong that this show was just, you know, hopping the whole day. I mean, from, I mean, the doors opened at nine o'clock on Saturday and uh, I would think by what, 1030 and we were rocking and we, I think we rocked yeah. all day. I mean, I don't think the, the, the people stopped coming in all day for the show. Well, yeah, you had the whole country of Canada buy out your hockey. <laughs> Like there were like there what was there like ten Canadians that stopped by and picked up multiple hockey slabs from you? Yeah, more yeah. than that. Like I, I mean, we'll cut to the chase now. I sold out almost all my hockey. I right. mean, that plan couldn't have worked out any better. And that's what I said to you that morning. My goal today is to just sell a ton of hockey. Right. And um, interestingly enough, and I'm just going to jump into that because I spoke to all the, I, like all of a sudden they started coming up to the table. They're interested in the hockey and they're looking at their phone and you could tell right away when they're saying when they're, well, last comp is, you know, 280 us. And right when they say they're, 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 when they're talking money and they're saying us, I know right away they're from Canada. And, uh, so the first, guy he comes he buys up a bunch of stuff and he says yeah i'm just i'm buying it here to bring back to to sell up there and then we had two more guys show up and now we're both making deals with them and and all this hockey and they're showing up with football we're trading back and forth for football and i said what what is going on and he said the football up we can buy the football cheap up in Canada. You know, he, they're showing up at Mahomes XRCs and Brady Bowman Chromes. And he says, you know, we get good deals up there. He says, but the hockey is so expensive. So what these guys are doing is they're buying the football up there at good prices. They're crossing the border. They're coming down here and they're trading the football for co- current U.S. comps, right? Or just selling them to get the U.S. cash. And then they're just buying out everybody's hockey so they can bring the hockey back to Canada and sell it yeah yep and and you know me i bought one hockey card and <laughs> i pulled that out of my my case because because oh also uh for everyone listening I, I didn't have cards set up like the whole setup was all ken's i just came basically to hang and 
and whatnot. Cause I was going to go to the show anyways, as an attendee, just to walk around and do deals, but Ken was going. So I helped him set up. I, I, I did that. So I just had my stuff there, but they're buying all of this hockey. And I'm like, I'm like, Hey, I got a hockey card. <laughs> <laughs> I got my one hockey card. And, and sure enough, I was able to make a, a good deal. And, yep. and uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I don't even remember the card I got back. I, it was, I, I traded away the, Oh, I do. I'm sorry. The I got a P- yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I got a PSA 10. Um, I don't have it on hand. I have a PSA 10, uh, silver prism, Anthony Edwards, and I traded away, um, a, a Jack Hughes young guns, PSA 10 yep. and a Joe Burrow, 2021 Genesis PSA 10 that I bought previous Sunday for 250. So I overpaid on it. And then that same day it auctioned for 135 and then he got hurt. Mm -hmm. So it, I just caught my losses. It's not like it's one of those borough cards that are like super high end, like your XRC auto that you're just going to hold. Right. It's just like a couple hundred bucks. So I'm like, yeah. just let me just wipe my hands of it and get into something else that I, that I like that. I yeah. want. Yeah. So I did that. They're super happy to get the, the Jack Hughes and, it worked out. So yeah. Yeah. Good well, I, start, I started out, I started out with four call Cofield PSA tens. I had five Jack Hughes PSA 10 young guns. I had the four of the PSA 10 Jack Hughes canvas. Um, and a number of other cards, like other players that were young guns and these, the, the, they were just buying, buying. And then the first guy came and bought and he was trying to buy, like more. And I, I said, look, uh, this is where I need to be on the price. And he's like, well, I want to be a little lower. I said, I can't go. And he came, he like walked away, came back three times and he says, all right, I'll come back. And it's not more than 20 minutes after he left then another group of people come from Canada and they were like, oh, that's fine. I'll buy it at that price, you know? And then they, yeah. so by the time he came back, he's like, what, what happened to those cards? I said, they're all gone. You know? Yep. Snooze, you lose on those. <laughs> so. What's funny is when, because you you were at the table most of the day, right? When I was walking, I saw those guys talking to each other, <laughs> like so. <laughs> yeah. So they must have been like, "Oh, you you got the cart, you got all that yeah. hockey from him." Yeah, 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 me too. Yeah. So yeah. that was that was funny. Yeah. yeah, they're super nice, super polite. Obviously, yeah. um, they did wreck me in a coin flip, but it it happens. It, I was already taking an L on the Joe Burrow, so I might as well mm -hmm. lost on the coin flip too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. So one of the cards I was able to pick up. So, you know, it, 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 if you're a listener to the pod, you know, I spoke for like almost two seasons on getting a Mahomes XRC. And I finally ended up with the, uh, you know, the BGS 9.5. And then another one, one of these guys from Canada, the second group of guys showed up with another one where they were trying to make a deal and buying. And they're like, well, you're interested in trading. And, they, and he had the smallest little case. And I said, yeah, I mean, it just depends on what you have. And then he opens it up and he pulls what I, I don't remember. There, there was there was this card and he pulled out two Brady's. Right. One was the one was the Brady Bowman Chrome. And one uh, was like a die cut that was numbered. It was autoed. He had one that was autoed. Remember, he had an auto, he had three Brady. It was like, and that's what they did. He bought they bought the Brady's, and they said, "Well, we knew we were coming here, so we figured the Brady's would be this would be the easiest place to move a Brady." And yep. we even said to each other that day, "We we saw so many Brady cards at this show that some of them I don't think have seen the light of day in twenty years." Right? Yeah. It just, all of a sudden, people were just like amazed, like some of these Brady's that people were pulling out you know, and dropping on tables, you know, just to try to figure out. And there were, there were a few people that were showing up with these cards that sincerely had no idea what the value of the cards were. No and idea. What the and it's fair to, because some of those things, like some of those cards that we're talking about, they, I, is there even sales data? I, you yeah. know, like tr tr truthfully, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Saw a lot of special things. Um, absolutely. You want to, you want to touch base on the guy who was next to us? Yeah, so we had a guy, we had a guy next to us that set that set up. Super nice guy. He had yeah. a small, he had a small case, like a two foot, you know, case, like a bulletin board type case, and he put some cards in there. But the rest of the stuff he set up were just games, right? They were the like like repacks, and there were dice, and and like uh, there were some cards that you could win that weren't repacked. And I thought to myself this guy's gonna have a hard day here like i don't know i mean i think we were both saying yeah that. yep yep 
because you've I've seen people try to do this at shows, and I, I swear I've seen people not sell one of the repack, yeah. right? Like, yeah, I see that. I feel like I'm like, yeah, never. Yeah. But this dude, nonstop all day selling was, those, and it, people it, were coming back buying more. They loved it. It was gambling for kids. I mean, that kind of is like literally what it was. They come up, everything was twenty. $25, roll the dice, $25, roll the dice. And the kids were getting these repacks. They were pulling out the stuff and he was crowded all day long. Yeah. There, I, I, my mind was blown. He also had some pretty special cards in the case. I don't know if you saw his case. No, there was a card. It was, it was dual on card. Um, it was like Griffey and Mickey Mantle. It was pretty cool. Like, like oh. he had some, he had some oh, super yeah. high end stuff in there. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Like, I, I do remember seeing that. He had some special stuff, but that game, I've never seen one like successful, and it was so successful, like all day. Yeah, all yeah. day. It he was, it was, it was cool well. to see because yeah. I feel like whenever I see those, like they're really just, they look sad by the end of the day. <laughs> the the the, <laughs> the people with their like, I feel like it never works out, and I'm like, I feel bad, but like I'm. I don't want to pay 25 bucks to get a $15 slab. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I just, yeah. 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 Well, it's the same with scratch tickets, right? Or any, yeah. any other, any other lottery ticket that, you know, somebody, somebody's winning, but it may not be you. Yeah. 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 And we were in, like, we were, our, our A section was just like, you know, we were sectioned off. So on one end, who was down, who was down the end from Tampa? It was Miss. Miss sports cards. I think her name is Anna. Yeah. yeah. She, yeah. So she was up from Tampa. Yep. She was set up, uh, went down, talked to her for a little while. Um, we had a pretty good group, you know, in our in our yeah. first first section there. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the other things, uh, and I had talked about on on some podcast, you know, the last couple podcasts is one thing I'm starting to look for is like goats and on card auto of goats and. Uh, you know, this this card just showed up at my table right here. I'm just going to hold it up here. It's a it's a um, upper deck uh, diamond club. Uh, it's 2017. It's Wayne Gretzky. It's uh, on. Oh, no, this this one here was a sticker auto um, and it is number to 30. So this was uh, this was a car I was excited to see. Uh, and a funny thing was it showed up with a Bobby Orr. It showed up this card. Also, he had he had a Bobby Orr auto and I ended up uh, making a deal for this card. I made a trade uh, to get this card. So I was super excited about that. And um, later in the day, uh, I know uh, Tom Kirill recognized real. He he's another one that sells hockey. I mean, we do the same thing. We PC the same stuff. We like the same stuff. He does hockey. He does a lot of women's sports. So I uh, went back and checked in him at, checked in with him at the end of the day. And I said, Hey, any nice pickups? And as soon as I looked down, I saw the Bobby Orr card there. Hmm. And I said, well, I got the Gretzky. So I left you the, the Bobby Orr. Right. So, um, and I think probably him and I were the only two probably buying hockey or looking looking at hockey to even buy it because I think that's why I did so well selling my hockey because there were, you know, all these, uh, all these people buying it up and, but there wasn't many people selling it. There was him, there was I, and I think there may be one other guy that was selling some hockey. Yeah. Um, I, I think the most popular sport that I saw moving around frequently was basketball yeah. overall, overall. I, it's, by far. And there was a lot of baseball there. Did you feel there were a lot, was a lot of baseball cards there? Bowman. Um, cause it, it's like a good time now to buy Bowman because prices start spiking when spring training comes around. So people will buy the Bowman and pros uh, the, the prospect all mostly guys who are not in the majors. I mean, you can still buy the, the guys in the majors, their, their Bowman cards, but, um, you know, a, a lot of it is prospecting. So, um, I just That's, don't remember last year or the year before seeing baseball like like you know into November like a lot of it after the World Series a lot of it just starts to go away and mm -hmm. it comes back out in the spring. Yeah, but I did see a lot of baseball. I agree with you. I saw a lot of that. Um, mm -hmm. I th yeah, I picked up a I picked up uh just the Adley 
I'm sorry, not the Adley, the Corbin Carroll uh, first refractor yeah. from uh, from it was a couple that came up to us. You, yeah. you bought a couple cards off of them, but they're yeah. they're nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. Uh, what do you think? Your I know that you were a little apprehensive at the beginning of the day. Like, what do you think they could have done? I don't know, even to make it better or any and different anything that you had in mind at Gillette? No, no. I thought it was a great day. And when I don't know who was talking to us, but you know, he said, you know, nine o'clock that the you know they they were opening up that that snack bar area they were selling you know alcoholic beverages down That's there Sean Sean Moore <laughs> yeah. they they had they had you know seating set up all and it was all down another end it wasn't like a lot of times you go to these shows right and they have a snack bar that's right inside of the show which is great but then you go buy something and you like you're standing around trying to eat the food because there's nowhere to sit down there's nowhere to really yeah. you know go have a seat and enjoy the the food you just had uh, so it was nice here that they had a whole other section that was, you know, where you go order the food, you could sit and eat. And I, and I think that was really important, especially for a lot of people that were showing up with families, showing up with kids and stuff like that. Because, I, you know, I had walked over there a couple of times and I could see a full family sitting at a table, you know, like eating lunch, you know, have, or either that or just yeah. taking a break, which I think is important at a show just to be able to go take a break. Um you know, I'm I'm gonna jump ahead and we're gonna come right back. Cool. You know, you know, I I I had um I I have a problem with one of my knees, right? So sometimes just you know, being at shows and then walking and things like that, it just it starts to bother me. So by the time you know today came and we were we were at Mohegan, you know, I was walking around Mohegan, I'm talking to people and stuff like that, and I was just like wow, I just need to sit for a minute because my knee was bugging me, right? And I ended up having to walk out of the show, walk across the way and go sit outside. They would have tables set up outside and sit outside and just take take a quick break, you know, just to, you know, take a rest for a few minutes. And then I was thinking back to the Gillette show that they had all those seats, all those tables. Like, what? A, how important is that? And it's got to be. And I go to a lot of these shows, and some of these shows, if there's no place to even sit down or rest, I mean, if you're getting tired, where are you going to sit? Where you know, like people get tired, people, and especially if you have kids, sometimes you just have to like settle the kid down, like come here, just sit down, relax for a few minutes, let's take a break, regroup, and then we'll go back at it again. So I think that was really important. That was one of the things I wanted to say. I thought was fantastic about this show. Yeah, I, I agree because I mean I've been out at a couple of shows where people just passed out, like <laughs> like like actually like actually like just dropped. Um, there's been multiple, and usually it was like tight space everyone overwhelmed i mean yeah yeah so i felt the the space itself was amazing um mm -hmm. i i was gonna say i i don't think it could have been any better it was it was awesome yeah, yeah i just wanted to because you've you know you've been setting up everywhere so i just kind of wanted to see what yeah. you thought but yeah I, I loved it i thought it was great yeah. um if I, if I ever became a promoter to set up a show i'm taking all these mental notes of what i all the things that i think worked all the things that i think didn't work and you know yeah some someday the national may come calling to, <laughs> you know <laughs> to, to pick through my notes <laughs> absolutely yeah that's what happens when you get to be my age you look at you know you're looking at things much differently than you know when you're younger which is uh and a lot of things a lot of things you you, you look at differently but anyways let's jump uh let's jump into some of these pickups okay so, um, and I only put a few here. Um, I showed you the two. I showed you the uh, the Gretzky and the Mahomes. Uh, another kind of cool pickup, and I know they're playing my team tomorrow night. I picked up this Jalen Hurts light blue prism, PSA 10. Um, <laughs> and interestingly enough, the guy that came and sold me this card at a very good price, at a very good price. Agreed. Um, he came back. And he ended up buying five hockey cards from me. No kidding. So his goal was to go sell all the football cards he came with and then use the money to come back. And and I had no idea. I mean, I, I, I told him, I don't know why you left. You should have took the rest of your football cards out. I may have wanted to. Because I remember you called him over 
and you said, are you, are you selling anything in your case? And he goes, not really. He goes, I have this one card. And then he pulled it out and at a great price, yeah. at a great price. I'm like, at that sold, yeah. you know? And yeah. uh, yeah, I don't know what else he had in there. I probably, probably should have wrestled it out of his hands, but well, that's, I always try doing that. So mm -hmm. like if I, cause I don't think me and you have ever got to set up together really. Like, no. like whenever I set up, I'm always just like, Hey, what you got, what you got, yep. what you got, yep. you know, just talking. And because yeah. I, it may not be true, but maybe sometimes it is. I feel like sometimes the, the stuff that people come with could be better than what the dealers have. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you never it, know, right? You, it you is a hundred, hundred percent. It's, it may not be like better stuff, but it's better priced. You know, right. a, lot, a lot of it, you can get it at a better price and make a deal. So, so two things about that. When you're alone at a table, it's very hard to do because you're really there to sell and you want to sell, but you, you want to buy, you want to go through things, but you don't want to ignore other people that are possibly coming to buy. And two, you don't want to be covering up your cards on your case, you know, right. putting the case down. So what I found when that really works well is taking like if there's a lot of people that are selling is just take one case down and leave a space on the table where yeah. you know i could be looking through it but also you know maybe chatting with somebody about a card but i think it worked out well with you there right because you're right at the end of the table you could just say hey you know i'm busy over there make negotiating making sales and you know you could you know poke through people's stuff so i i, I thought that tag team was working out well yeah absolutely and um yeah people had some great stuff uh you want to any other pickups that you want to touch on or should? Um, nope. That's those, those were the, uh, well, I had the other one that I picked up from Mohegan that I'm okay. going to say, I'm going to save that. Yeah, one. We'll, we'll wait. We'll wait yeah. for that. But uh, I'll, I'll get into first. I'll talk about a card I bought to make a play on. Um, I, for a while, like I've been super pro Jalen hurts. Um, I just, I love the Eagle system. I love the weakness of the NFC compared to the AFC respect, you know, respectively. Um, and, uh, I found a card that was raw and I paid very, very strongly for, um, but the hope is that I can grade it and make some money. So I'll put it up right here. It is the. Jalen Hurts, Rookie Kaboom, KJH1. So he has several Rookie Kabooms. This one seems to be the least common. It's the throwing version. Um, And so really, uh, it was a nice uh, guy and his son. His son's probably like 11 or 12. They're set up together. And they, they, had a, they had several like really nice cards. And they had one case of like, lower end stuff like stuff under 40 bucks that his son was basically just operating and learning and doing deals with mo mostly other kids his age there and then he said this is this case is not really even like inventory he's like this is like just our personal collection that's what he said and he had a bunch of one touches on them with the latent you know sports cards latent sports cards the breaker seals on them and the the hertz was one of them so he goes, yeah, I don't even really want to sell it, and his price was was pretty pretty much a PSA nine, like a higher end version of the PSA nine. Um, and he said, like he he was like, I he's like, I know it's a good deal because I feel in my gut that I don't want to sell it to you. That was <laughs> that was what he said, right? And and I know like. And, and, and you know, for me, I, I, on record, I will pay so strong for clean raw because of the upside. And mm -hmm. honestly, I feel like I'm learning more about myself. Like the whole, like, I know you have to do it for margins and stuff, but like, I always feel kind of schemey, like underpaying and lowballing people to, to try to make the profits and make the margins. Like, I'm just not that good at it. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not that good at it. And like, I I've had my own like success in the hobby, just doing it my way. So like, I, I, I just, I don't like being the bad guy. Like, I really don't. I, I like not the bad guy, but you know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. we all know, right? Yeah. Like I, 
I bought a bunch of cards that I went to go try to sell to like a, a mutual, like through a mutual friend, right? Like today. And um, I, I bought the cards at 70%. I was ready to get them, get rid of them at like 75%. The best offer I got was 62%. And I'm like, what? Like, like wouldn't budge above it. And I'm like, I'm trying to do you a favor. Like I'm trying to get you some inventory, but no, yeah. you know, but anyways, on the Jalen Hurts, um, love the card. I, you know, like that type of card you, you never get to see in the wild raw. Mm. And like, mm. if it is usually it's like, it's smoked. There's something wrong with it. Yeah. And what's, what's the, what's the multi multiplying factor between a nine and a 10 on that card? 2.25 but but the, but the you know like but, but with how expensive the card is like that's that's a big 2.25 for me for me it is like yeah. for me it's a big 2.25 yeah. yeah but right? it's got to to make sense now it's got a gem right i mean for you for you it's got a gem or even if it becomes a nine if, it, if it's a nine i'll probably make a couple a couple hundred bucks all right maybe maybe yeah you know Either way, either way, it's like it's, it's something that I felt um, risk reward. We always got to kind of go into that, you know, mm -hmm. regardless if you're buying at a percentage or you're you're buying raw, you, you just got to you got to try. So mm -hmm. I, I came in with cash and I wanted to, to buy something that was going to make make it worth my while. So I did. Yeah. And uh, stay tuned. We'll see how that is. Yeah. Yeah. We'll um, keep, keep updated. So that was the card I picked up to make a play. Um, the other card I picked up from a really good friend of mine who you've 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 met a couple times now, right, Ken Matthias? Yep. Super great guy. Um, he he mainly does soccer. He does he does I, I should take that. He does soccer and Otani. He has he has some Otanis, but mainly it's soccer. Um, and he had. A 2017 Topsy UEFA um, Christian Polistic Blue out of um, out of 150, and I am as the hat I have on U.S. Men's National Team, and I'm a I'm a Dortmund fan as well. So that checks both of those boxes, and it's you know a true color. It's a true blue, it's, um, and that's just something that's appealing to me, and. I, I know I mentioned earlier, I want to talk about the 2017 set. It's the first UEFA Tops Chrome set, right? So it's a set that has like staying power. So if you think basketball or football, you could think like first year prism. Um, and so for me, being a U.S. men's player that also, you know, broke into Europe on my favorite club team, it checks a lot of boxes for me. So, and Matthias gave me a, a good deal, um, a really good deal, probably a friend's deal, honestly, on it. And I was, and I was like, dude, I was like, I, and most people know that I just, I usually just flip stuff. I was like, this actually is not going to go anywhere. I was like, and I didn't, I, true to my word, I didn't even bring it to Mohegan today. Like this thing is not going to leave the house in a long yeah. time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so those are, the, those are the cards we love to buy. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's so funny. Like I've a long, like when we went to that Mount Isco show a while ago, a lot of the dealers that had no soccer, like, like four or five of them there were like, yeah, I actually PC soccer. So it's kind of interesting. I see a lot of people PCing soccer. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, because yeah, I don't think there's a big uh re you know flipping market for it right now yeah but i think people remember how popular it got how the cards went way up and that there was such a big you know following and and now i think soccer is just becoming more and more and more popular and everybody's holding because they really think that's the next wave or like they think soccer is going to be you know catch up like you know basketball yeah. baseball hockey things like that it's going to be and there, there are a lot of expensive soccer cards. Like I've, I've oh, yeah. gone, gone to shows and I've looked in cases and saw prices on cards and, you know, I was mind blown. One thing you touched on, and that's kind of why I put this Jalen Hurts out to, to kind of show. Um, you talked about like, you know, you being offered 62% comps. 
So for the most part yesterday, I thought the, uh, the back and forth and negotiating with people was very fair. You know, people would come in and say, ah, if I take more than one card, can you be at 70? No, I can. This is where I could be, you know, and and the negotiation was really turning into the uh, to, to the percentage of the card versus the price of the card itself. And then once you got to that, then you had to figure out what what was the comp you were going to to go on with this card like you know if there's five sales and i'll give a for instance there was a 150 a 175 you know a 160 and a 300 dollars you know because that's always happens like on, on comps there's always one really high and one really low you know type of comp and so if and, you're selling it it's 300 but if you're buying it it's 130 absolutely yeah, but, that's but how it goes of, but at the end of the day you really have to figure out you, you know you're talking whoever is you know the potential buyer or if you're the potential buyer you know you have to talk it through and you know have it make sense for both people in order to be you know a good deal you know for both sides so one of the interesting things on this card right here this jalen hurts this blue prism is i knew the comps on this card right was about 458 right so I mean, solid a bunch of them right there yeah there was a bunch of those sold at that price and when the guy came up to the table, he said, you know, I'll, I want 400 for it. I mean, there was no reason for me to even negotiate any further because I think he's figured out, you know, I'm just going to cut right to it and say, this is what I want for the card because that's what made sense for him. So then other people, prospective buyers showing up, this one particular card, you know, it was three or four times people would come up and be like, Oh, really? I like that hurts. And they start looking and they say, Oh, like the last comps on it were, you know, like they would, they would now there was like five or six right in the four fifties. Right. And then there were five from card ladder. Yeah. Like with the green check. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. And and then there, and then there was one maybe around four forty or four thirty, and they would go right to that one. Well, the last comp was about four twenty, you know, which was below the last one. And I said, well, it's been around, you know, I know where it's been. It's been, around, you know, and yeah. uh, the offers were coming out were silly on it. I mean, somebody offered 320 on it. Somebody offered 310 on the card. And I just thought they were unbelievably silly offers on a card that was solid comps in the 450s. Uh, but all the other cards that I sold at that show People were very reasonable and we, we talked about it and we were usually just a couple of percent off one way or another. And people wanted to flip, flip coins like, like, like you did. I mean, I'm not that, that let's make a deal, right? Or let, let, let's figure it out. Um, because I don't, I don't like the, the game of champs. Champ, and I know it, I know it's kind of exciting and I know people are like, oh, this is, but. You my know, coin flip was the difference of 30 bucks. So yeah, like, yeah. like I didn't want to let the deal walk for 30 bucks. So I was just like, Hey, let's see. You know, yeah. some people do those crazy coin flips where I'm like, that's like, no, but yeah. if it's going to make sense and we're just like a little off, I, I feel like it's fair. It's like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, but yeah, mm-hmm. keep in mind, that was the second coin flip I've ever done. Yeah. So, yeah. And of course I lost and he pulls this coin out. Had to be weighted. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, and shout out yesterday to my guy, Brian, uh, from, uh, I believe he's from New Hampshire, came down with his son and his mom. Uh, we had, uh, messaged, um, uh, for a, a couple of times during the week, uh, he was looking for, uh, American pie cards. Uh, and I pulled out my American pie cards from, uh, last year, all the base cards that I had. And, uh, he came, uh, came to visit and, uh, bought up a bunch of, uh, Bought up a bunch of cards. It was uh, a pleasure seeing him. I hadn't seen him in a while at a show. So uh, it just reminds me of kind of what what this hobby is about, right? You know, so much friendship and so much people that you meet. And, and you know, when I tell people on here, oh, I'm going to do this show or that show, I love the fact that people are showing up you know, and saying, hey, love the podcast. Love, you know, it's, it's, it, it's not, I mean... It, you know, you were there, you, you, you see how like it energizes me when, when, yeah. when people come to visit and, you know, want to talk about the podcast or just people that I've met through the hobby and they, they're going to be there. They're excited to see me. I'm excited to see them. It just, it just, it's, it's a great reminder what this hobby is all about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and it was like, 
I really enjoyed that Massachusetts card scene. I, I said that to you, like, because mm-hmm. you know us coming up from Connecticut, we know our mm-hmm. people in Connecticut. But like, well, they had that. They had that group, the Cardboard Association. <laughs> that group, those those guys are great. I mean, I oh my you, god, yeah. you introduced the, them to me. Yeah. I met them at the um, the Shriner show last year when I went to the Shriner show with you yeah. last year. Uh, you introduced me to those guys, and now you know it's great. I see them at all these shows, and and they're just a great great group of guys. They are. They're, they're all super fair. They all like, and I think like a bunch of the them, I think they like grew up together and you, you can just tell like they're, they're just buddies and, but they're so welcoming. And in terms of a Facebook group, right. Cause like, I'm sure all, everyone like, you know, card Facebook yeah. <laughs> could go either way, but that, that group, man, like they've created such a great, like culture to the group and environment. Like yeah. it's, it's like, I know it's going to sound corny, but it's almost like a safe space to be in there. Like I, most of my posts in that group are more about communication based than card based. I swear. Like, I'm like, Hey, what's everyone doing this weekend? Where are you going? I, I, I always like, I'll shoot out a message. Like where are the shows this weekend? And within 10 minutes, I have like five responses. And like, there's this one in like, was it like Dover, New Hampshire? That's supposed to be pretty good. I eventually want to go to that. They always talk about, but like, yeah, they're great. The, the, I, I just really enjoy that scene, all those guys. It's it's mm-hmm. super enjoyable to see them, always. Nice. Um, then we go to Mohegan, right? Yeah. We're done. We're done. Uh, we're done up there. We pack it up. We head out. I dropped you off. I head over to Mohegan. I stay the night. Um, I get up this morning. I get over. Uh, I see my guy Scott sign up, Sky Up Signings. He's the promoter at that show. Uh, great guy. Um, and I knew I talked to a bunch of people, said the show was great. So I was looking forward to, uh, to walking this show, uh, today, I'm going to say today, cause this is Sunday still. Yep. So, so I walked this show today. Um, and I made, uh, I made a pretty big pickup that I'm so excited. I'm going to start with that. Cause that's how my day started. Uh, I went in and saw my guy Joe Premier Sports uh, RI, uh, great guy. Um, been friends with him for a while, and uh, he had posted some cards and one that I saw that I really liked. And I didn't want to get too excited about it. I knew he was going to be at the show. I had a feeling maybe he may sell it, but I'm just going to keep it in the back of my mind. But when I showed up and started talking to him this morning, as we're talking, I'm looking through his case and I realized he still had it. So uh, we worked out a deal. Um, So I was excited to get a deal done with him. But this is the uh, 2014 Tops five-star autographs. uh, Tom Brady, it's uh, on-card auto. It's a BGS 9.5. And I am holding that up if you're on YouTube. Super excited to have that card. I was thinking that as I started the weekend out, I was going to look for some Bowman Chromes. And I had this card in mind and I was comparing those to this card in my mind. You know, the whole weekend of what I was seeing. And then we're at Gillette. And then there were all these other really kind of neat cards that came up. And then I said to myself, Here's a card, this five-star card that you don't see a lot, right? It's got an on-card auto on it. Uh, you know, it's certainly more than the, than, than the Bowman Chrome, but it uh, it's a unique card. And if I'm going to take a card and I'm going to, you know, PC it of a goat with a nice on-card auto, I mean, why not do it with Brady? And not, why not do it with kind of a unique card and not a card you see a lot? And one of the reasons I see probably is that, I don't know if you can see this, but this card is super thick. So for this to end up to be a nine five is, you know, we know these super thick cards are so hard, so hard to grade. You know, you're grading, you know, you're not grading four corners, you're grading eight corners and, 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 and things like that on it. So yeah, I was super excited. Great deal. Uh, Happy to have this card. It's going to go, uh, it's going to go here in the office and uh this will be another card that probably won't see the uh the outside light <laughs> for, for, right, for a long yeah. time yeah 
I know I walked in and you're like, Oh, look what I got. And I'm like, Holy crap. I was like, <laughs> I was like, geez, Ken, like that's that, how you're that starting the day off. So, but yeah, you know what about, about Scott, I'd like to say like, I, Scott probably doesn't even like know who I am or anything. So I'm in line um, with some guys that I saw that they went to Gillette, they went to Quincy. So they, 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 they hit all three. Right. Yeah. So they came here and uh, Scott, man, like, for all the people coming in, you know, buying admission, like he's just standing out there helping, making sure that's all going through. And he just strikes up a conversation with us. He's like, he's like, yeah, he's like, he's like, it's way more important that all you guys are having a good time than me having a good time. And I was like, I was like, oh, so it's just like constant anxiety till it's over. No, it, right. I was like, right. And he's like, he's like, no, I, he's like, I truly enjoy this. He's just like, but my main focus is for you guys all to have as good of a time as you can. And, He's so he's genuine about it. Yeah. Like, like, yep. and I could just tell. So, yep. Good, so uh, it, it, inter year. interesting that that, I mean, you know, you can tell he's doing a good job because that show is sold out. I mean, that show sold out really quick um, because I know I ended up in Gillette because I got on his waiting list. Right. And then they announced the Gillette show. So then I jumped into the Gillette show. Um, and I think it says something that people didn't jump ship to go to a professional sports stadium mm, like yeah. that. I think that kind of speaks to how he is and how, how the show is. Cause you know what? The show was good. The show, the show was real yeah. good today yeah. there too. Yeah. Um, I don't and, know anything about the Quincy show. Although I know there was, there were three or four people that were at Gillette that had tables at both. So they had a table at Gillette and a table at the Quincy show and they were, they had people manning, you know, because they didn't want to miss out and they had to figure out like, what image do I bring this inventory here? Do I bring that inventory there? What, you know, what's going to go well at each show. And that was like, that was the biggest concern they had of the day, but they, yeah. they, they didn't want to miss both shows, but we talked to a ton of people who did all that were doing all three shows. I mean, they, they thought it was the best, and especially these guys coming from Canada, Right. They just thought that it was, you know, if I'm going to come down and get to hit all these shows, I mean, yeah, it'd be the weekend to come here. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Of course. Sure. Of course. I mean, they say, I, I have to say, I think they've saved me a trip to, uh, to the Toronto Expo by buying all my hockey out. I mean, last mm -hmm. year I had so much hockey left over. That's why I brought it there in April to sell it all. Right. So, yeah. So this year they, uh, they really, uh, they banged it up good for me. So maybe save me some money, some, uh, you know, for traveling up there. And, and what I'll say is because you have you've only went to one of the expo shows, right? Yep, yep just okay. last April. Yeah. So I set up at the one in Portland, and then I set up at the one in Stanford. I personally had a very good time at both. The one in Portland, Maine, was a for me was a really good buying show. Mm. And then I, I explained oh, were to you, you. Were you saying set up an expo, the Toronto Expo, or the the North? The, the, the so the Quincy promoter. Those shows are the Northeast Expo. Yeah. The North you East. know what? I I that's when my mom passed away. I was supposed to set right. up in Stanford, right. and I never did. So I've never set up at 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 that's right. those shows. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, because I I remember hearing like so I I had I feel like I had different experiences than most from those two, so I could speak on it. Um, like. I, I enjoyed both at um, other than the national, the best sales I've ever done was at that Stanford show. Yeah. So, and then from what I heard from everyone is that it was really slow at the Stanford show, but mm -hmm. I, I personally had a good experience there. Yeah. So, and then at what I'll say at Portland, it was tough to sell mm. there. Yeah. But um, I, I don't know how Quincy was, but that was just my experiences from there. The the promoter super nice, super yep. nice guy. Um, yep. From what I, I I heard, mixed things about like I heard some people say the Quincy show was really good. I heard some people say it was slow. So maybe it's just that these people are hopping back and forth. Could have been yeah, the time they were there. Right? It really depends on what you're selling too, because yeah. there were people yesterday at, at at Gillette that you know said there was a ton of foot traffic, but I hardly sold anything. So mm -hmm. that that's. To me, that says two things. Either you didn't have the right cards, you know, or the right sports or whatever your in your are case, off. or your prices are just yeah. too far off. And I know, I mean, I, I talk about this all the time. You go to a show like that, 
you don't have a lot of time. You're asking somebody, can you watch my table? I want to run around. So I don't have a lot of time. If I'm looking in a case and I know like a Brady Bowman Chrome, you know, is selling for about 22 or 2300 and I and I go up to your case and I see you've got one in there and you've got a $3,500 sticker on it. You're it, not going to come back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's over a thousand dollar difference there. So I, I'm going to move on. I, I don't have the time to ask you why it's priced that way or whatever. So I'm probably going to move on. So when people come in to the show, they may feel the same way. I mean, when I'm at a show and I'm not hurrying to go back, I'll ask people, I'm like, Oh, it's, what's the difference on this? Cause I know that, you know, there's, you know, like around 2,300, most of them say, look, I'm underwater on it or I'm whatever yeah. on it. You know, like, you know, you kind of know what's coming anyways. And some people may say, oh, shoot me an offer on that. I haven't priced that in, you know, in a few weeks and I know it's high or something, you know, so you never know. But as a dealer, when you're running, when you're hustling around, it, I, I just don't have time to, if I see things that I'm looking for and I know I've researched it, I know what I'm looking to pay. And if, if there's, room to negotiate there. I'll try and negotiate, but if not, I'm, uh, I'm just going to move on. So, uh, yeah. the Mohegan sun, uh, show, I thought it was great. I mean, there was a ton of Pokemon. I can't believe that Pokemon is still that popular. I didn't, I honestly did not think it was still that popular, but there was a ton of Pokemon at that show. There was actually a tournament going on there. Um, someone I went to high school with, told me he like finished eighth and like the top eight split like a cash prize. Oh, wow. um, so that was going on, I think yesterday. Um, so yeah, it was pretty cool. Like I, I gotta say, I don't really know much about any of that at all, but um, mm. it's very cool to see all the different um, people there. You, you, yeah. you, you really do. You see a different people, different things. Yeah. Um, and kudos yeah. and kudos to Scott. I mean, if that keeps up that way, he may end up with two shows, right? He may end up with a sports and then a, a, a Pokemon because I know he was sold out really fast, you know, and I know I wasn't the only one. I know, I know uh, if, if I remember correctly, I, mean, I said, I started with this, I know, and I want to retract that. But if I remember correctly, I think I want to tell me he had a waiting list of like 140 or 150 people yeah. on that waiting list. So that, I mean, that just, goes to show you when you know we have you know card show mageddon going on and you've got a waiting list that deep it's you know that it, he's doing something right up there so Agreed. you know he, that may even be able he may even be able to break that into two shows right one one Agreed. tcg and then another one all sports um or be or just expand it you know so works for me it's personally it's a great show and it's like 20 <laughs> 15 minutes from my house yeah. so yeah. I, don't, I don't care. I'll keep going. It's it's so yeah. close that like, it's not like I'm driving 50 minutes for a VFW show, right? Like it's way better than that. Yeah. So, yeah. I, yeah. I, and I interestingly love. enough, you know, you see the same people, you see the same dealers. Like I go to the, I go to the, the Enfield show. I go to the Plainville show, you know, the Mount Kisco. Show. I go to the, you know, so I see, and you see a lot of the same people there. Um, so just interesting enough. One of the cool things today, I'm standing there, I'm looking at, at a case and all of a sudden somebody next to me says oh man you got any trinity rodman cards and i'm like what the and i look over and who's standing next to me are the cousins cousin Oz, cousin tony cousin collectibles uh they they took a drive up from pennsylvania they uh Oz was doing a deal with somebody and uh they tried to figure out a halfway point and the guy said look i'm at the show i'm gonna be at the show so they decided to come up so uh I was able to hang out with them for uh, for a little while and uh, take a picture. And, uh, yeah, it was good. I hadn't seen those guys in maybe since National. I haven't seen them. So, yeah, it, it, it was kind of cool seeing them today. Hey, and you know what? I actually made some deals after you left. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, that I should, that, that'd, that'd be pretty cool. They were pretty cool. So, you know, John, uh, basketball card guy. Oh yeah, yeah. Love John. him. I, yeah. Every time I see him, man, I always want to make a deal with him just just because that like he's such he's like such a nice guy. Like yeah. he's legit, just such a nice guy, and we always have a good conversation. And um, you remember that Derek Jeter patch auto I had? Yeah. I so he's working with Arena Club now, which is like Jeter's yeah. thing. Yeah. So like he's basketball card guy, and I didn't even know that. But I was like, I mean, it's an auto, it's on card, and it's like a legend. So I was like, I'll show him. I know he loves autos. And I showed him, and he's like, 
yeah, this is like the one not basketball guy that I would absolutely want for my PC. <laughs> I was like, hey, look at that. So um, I ended up, there was that. And then you probably remember I had the Cade Cunningham Silver Prism Penmanship Auto. Mm-hmm. So I had those two cards and he had um, an Anthony Edwards uh, Obsidian at a 99. It's like the dual patch window auto card. Yeah. You know. So uh, we, we worked out a deal. He had a little bit of cash on top. Um, and then there's this, there's this really like, I'm going to explain what happened, but like it was, it happened in a way that like was not off putting or disrespectful at all. So we're, we're like sitting there trying to make a deal. Me and me and John just talking values and stuff and super fair. Like John, he, he's super easy to work with. So that was, that was cake. But the guy is like, well, I heard you say two on that and four on that, each of you know of our cards. And he's like, he's like, if you guys can't make a deal, I'll just give each of you cash for it. <laughs> make it easier. <laughs> and and funny enough, um, I sold and John, if you hear this, I'm sorry. Uh, but like I ended up selling that Anthony Edwards to that guy like 10 minutes later for the cash price. So like I, I just traded to to sell it and yep. yeah, nice. So mm-hmm. You know, that guy got a cool card. Um, and then John got a nice, a nice Jeter. He said he didn't have much Cade Cunningham either. So we got a Cade auto and and I I got cash. So so it all worked out. It was cool. But I love making deals with him. And then um you met you met my buddy. He's all over the Facebook groups. Uh he always has some really nice cards as oh, you yeah, saw. Yeah, he has some great cards in there. Yep. Joe yep. Schmo. Lives out in uh, out in Missouri, I want to say. He's yeah. such a nice guy. But uh, I ended up, um, I picked up this Tyrese Maxi. It is the Red Scope Prism Rookie Signatures Auto. Um, and yeah, he uh, he he's that guy. When they when the Sixers play my uh, my Celtics, I'm always like, oh, not Maxi, because he's always hitting a big shot. He's always doing that floater. He's he's just always making a great play. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm glad I got got that auto uh, from Joe too. So no. so yeah, it was another deal I made. And then I just said hey to some people that you know that I knew and we knew, and um, I ended up heading home watching football today. So that yep. was it was a nice it was a fun card weekend for sure. Yeah, yep. and that's what my goal was today too. Be home by kickoff at one o'clock and. I, I left uh, I left Mohegan at twelve. It was an easy drive home, forty five minutes. I was home and uh, yeah, got the football on by one o'clock. Um, you know what? I, I came home and I had you know a whole bunch like mail day, right? I had a bunch of packages here, but the one the one I want to share as I talked about on the last episode was the uh, Trinity Rodman uh, Obsidian, the black color blast, the PSA nine. So that did show up in the mail. I'm just going to hold that up. Super excited. Eric, I know you're listening. I don't know if you watch, but I know you're jealous now. (laughs) Uh, My guy, my other Trinity Rodman uh, collector. Uh, But this one here, uh, I got from David. He's on IG at uh, DT Card Hut. uh, And I said it was a a great deal. And and the one thing I want to say and I'm just going to point this out because him and some other things that came in the mail today, I'm really impressed the way people are packaging things these days. Like I'm getting these cards and, you know, I know they're just coming from people like me, but the packaging, which used to be like a, a card with some painter's tape, you know, in a one touch thrown in a bag. Now it's between cardboard. Now it's wrapped in cellophane, you know, and it's, it's like some of the, some of the packaging that comes, I say, wow, people are going all out to package this stuff. Cause I can remember, you know, two, three years ago, ordering stuff from people and it's showing up. I'm like, this, these cards are ruined, you know, they're all banged up, but now they're really, People are really taking the time to package package stuff well. I'm impressed, and I'm happy to see that. I'm excited to buy cards and not have to worry about getting damage being shipped. Yep. Yeah. So what else? Anything else before we wrap up? We're almost at an hour. Um, In our Dynasty League, you're dead last. I'm second to last. Um, we're fighting for that first overall pick next year, and I, I think Ken's going to pull away with it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Unfor- yeah unfortunately it's it, it sucks to be this the 
the second worst, right? You don't, yeah. No one wants to be last except if you're playing Dynasty, you know? Hey, hey, every NFL draft, think about it. When is the very first overall pick the guy? And and how many times it's the seventh or the twelfth or the fifteenth mm. pick ends up being the guy. So all we have to do is go by either a people who are talking about these college players coming out and make a decision from that, or go out and watch these players and think we know more than everybody else. Right. You know, our own scouting reports. So whether you're dead last, second to last, you know, fifth to last, I. I I, I don't think you can predict who the best players are going to be. I mean, yeah, think about it. If if, if it was this year, right? Like, and it was just a rookie draft, like, would where would Puka Nakua have even gone, right? Like, <laughs> seriously. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, w- with all the – it is a super highly touted rookie class. Like, but, yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's kind of it, man. I, I think mm-hmm. I think uh, we covered covered the weekend. I'm in, I'm just, I'm just going to tell you, I'm in, I'm in, a, you know, a few fantasy leagues. One of them, I'm nine and one. I'm so far out. I mean, the next guy next to me is, is only has five wins as I'm dominating this league. And, and right now I'm looking down at my, my fantasy score right now. I'm losing one set by a hundred points over a hundred points. I'm losing this week. In Dynasty? It, no, and in, in, it's just in a regular fantasy league. I'm losing by, I'm beating, I'm, I'm nine and one in this league. I don't even know how I'm losing so poorly. I mean, I, I you know, I guess with the bye week and and whatever, I and I know, uh, you know, somebody gets. Sounds uh, like you can afford a loss, though. Yeah, yeah, I, I could take a loss, but that's that's just the kind of stuff that happens to me in the playoffs, right? I go, I'll be in front of everybody, get all the way to the playoffs, and then get knocked out. Well, you yeah. know what? That's the thing about fantasy football is I don't care how I do as long as I make that playoff cut, because it, like, really, man, like it yeah, doesn't matter. Starts, it, like, it, that's where the season starts is the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, like, like, and I think for fantasy football, like what, like what judges a like a good fantasy football manager isn't necessarily championships because I, I mean, I sure it does, but like what championship, a lot of that's luck. Like, like, like really a lot of that is luck because if you are someone who's consistently getting in your playoffs, I think that just shows overall consistency that you at least know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So except for dynasty, I guess. Yeah. Well, you know, a dynasty was a whole different thing. I, I, I went out and got all young rookie play. I was yeah, next year will be our year. Well, that's true too, man. You see like some of the teams that are good in our dynasty league. And you're like, if this league goes on five years, these guys are screwed. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like the problem is, and that's what happens in dynasty leagues. These go out, these guys go out and they'll win like the first year and they'll compete in the second year. They may compete by the third year. They realize they're so far behind because all these other players are coming up and then they just quit the league and just yeah. go, some, go, go yeah. jump into another league. Yeah. So that's, you know, you have to set it up to hope that they, they stick around and that the people who are really trying to build the team and, and, you know, do it right are, you know, rewarded for trying to do it right. I tried to I tried to draft pretty balanced, like, but yeah. you wanted your older players to be teaching your younger players on the bench, right? Pretty much, <laughs> pretty much, and uh, you know, not not necessarily happening. So yeah, yeah. All right, we're gonna wrap it up. Um, just a program note: uh, I will not be dropping a Thursday episode. It is Thanksgiving this week. I am going to take that Thursday off. Uh, Take that time off. I've got things planned. I'm going to spend it with the family. Um, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family, Jordan. And happy Thanksgiving to uh, all the listeners out there. Everybody listening, I hope you uh, I hope you enjoy your holiday. Enjoy your families. And uh, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And if you like what you hear, please like, definitely subscribe. And most importantly, tell a friend and spread the word. Until next time, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Take care, Jordan. See you. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone.